I'm really excited for the new direction with Warhammer. Yay! What's the new direction? Well, currently there's an article out about Kill Team, and here's three things from it. Miniature agnostic. Wait, wait, wait. Mi miniature agnostic. Correct. Solo gameplay uh -huh. and co-op gameplay. Okay. Miniature agnostic. Are you sure you read that correctly? Well, okay. It says model agnostic. It doesn't matter. It's GW. They would never do such a thing. That's impossible. Yeah, well, here it is in black and white. Ha, huh, I guess you're right. But what does this mean? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. So currently it's just for the NPCs, right? Which... Uh, Okay, yeah, non-player characters, and I guess that makes sense because like those are not really important, so to speak, as compared to main characters who are in the game. Yeah, they're and... meant to be tokens, more or less. Yes. But like the whole thing is, once you open that genie, it's not going back in there. Yeah, but it's like Inception. Once you plant the idea, you can't remove it. And there'll be videos like this proving like, hey, you know, you said this, so what of it? They can't go back later on and say, yeah, oh, yeah. we never said that because yeah, they've yeah. done that before. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But the real question is where do they go with it now and the thing that I've been looking at which has been causing a lot of upset with the community is the fact that currently Legends is causing a bit of upset. Yeah understandably so there are many videos out there or some videos out there talking about how they can no longer use their army after spending all that time assembling, painting, getting it ready for a game. Next thing you know oh you can't use it anymore. And I think that that is a very dumb idea because the whole thing with Games Workshop has been for years, for decades, that if you buy this, you can come back to this at any point in time. Exactly. And that kind of went back on their word and that concept and we'll the investment, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You, you are correct 100%, except the fact that like they never said this out loud. They never actually, it, it was an unspoken Anyhow, rule. Anyhow, so you're trying to say that maybe they could bring the legends back in with this uh, model agnostic rule that they've come up with? Yeah, so maybe the model agnostic could be used for miniatures. We invented an acronym which we call CAP. Uh, close as possible. And we think that this is something that they could use instead of WYSIWYG for Legends models. What's WYSIWYG again? What you see is what you get. Right, okay, that makes sense. So for example, with the Stormcast Eternal, all of those old Stormcasts, they can use them as the new ones, but yeah, just like that. What do yeah, you reckon? I think that makes a lot of sense actually and uh, you're saying they should be able to use them in the new kill team as well and all that well maybe not the stormcaster titles, but well hey they, they've got to have an excuse to use it somewhere right <laughs> well currently i guess yeah that's where you use all your stormcaster tunnels magical There's... pegasus flying in the sky i, I, I don't remember the song like, i keep i've heard it once i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> it was from some meme video i watched and i was like that's the that's the song that ima imaged in my mind when of Stormcast Eternal. Because they've got, don't they have flying horses as well that they ride on or dragons and stuff? Yeah, they got, got the wings. more dragons and stuff, less horses. But they got the angel oh, wings. Why, why are you flapping your arms up? All right, back on track. <laughs> back on track. So currently the only place that you could use the Stormcast Eternal is as these NPCs. But why, why not have a game? Why not have a battle report where you use the old Stormcast Eternals as the new one? An official battle report. Mm. And then suddenly they're like, oh. Oh. Yeah, so it gives them the idea that they can potentially use these models. Exactly. And the thing is, when you take a look at it this way, right, it's not an open admission or anything, right? But it gives permission to the player base to use it in this way. Yeah, and I think that's a much better way of handling it. So we've talked a lot about model agnostic. Let's talk more about the game modes. Okay, so they're coming out with co-op and solo play. And we've talked about this before. Essentially, <sighs> Warhammer is the monopoly of yeah, war games. Yeah, it, it's very competitive and long and draggy. <laughs> and like, essentially, if you're not playing it for the company of the people that you're around, it can be a very painful game. Miserable, more like. Yeah, and let's say that you're playing co-op instead. It doesn't matter if it's long and draggy because you're playing it with a friend, you're having fun, you know. Yeah, you've got a common enemy yes. to fight and everyone's, like you said, cooperating. Yeah, <laughs> um, but one of the things... It makes me question is this is a major selling point mm. of this game so imagine for example that this is brought into other game systems because this isn't this is so much different from everything else they have had cooperative games in the past like for example silver tower mm, and mm, way back mm. before that 
Hero, Hero Quest. Quest. Right. But of course, the thing is, they're board games. This is one of their main lines. Yes, it is. And we've talked about how Kill Team actually feels more like their flagship game yeah, rather does, than 40k. It does feel like their flagship game right now because I think people like Kill Team for all of the reasons why we dislike 40k because you can just buy one squad it's really super detailed you put all of your effort into yep. it and you're just like all right i'm gonna use this one team i'm gonna you know play with it for like half a year until i get bored of it and then i'm gonna buy another kill team and then or it also encourages to buy more kits as well because they're just like small squads and you feel more accomplished finishing you you small feel squads. more in control as well because yeah. you're like oh okay no i haven't bought a million units for my army yeah i've just bought a couple of different kill teams. I want to have different options. Yeah. And it's a it's a much better place to argue from with the sort of unfortunate hoarder perspective. Yeah, that's that's fair point. And I also hear that kill team is a lot easier to get into. It's very the rules are simpler. Well, uh, I guess that's much of a muchness. But the other thing that I want to talk about is does this mean that they're considering other ideas? For example, when I told you about Rogue Trader, you were much more interested because there was a GM character. Yes, uh, I, I think that's, for me personally, especially because I'm not very used to these sorts of games, a GM is someone you can sort of bounce yourself off of and ask yep, questions. Yep, 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 yep. And it, it reduces the amount of confusion during the gameplay because that's something I face a lot with the games that we do play, which is Frostgrave and Stargrave, I'm constantly like, am I reading this right? Is this correct? Can I do this? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to irritate my opponent by asking all these questions. Rather, I'll annoy my GM instead. <laughs> well, I think the role of a GM, I know I should clarify, Game Master, yeah. is somebody who can make things run smoothly. Yeah. And the thing is, they can bring the scenarios to life. Oh, and yes, I think definitely. this is a role that Games Workshop really wants to have because game masters have an unfortunate habit of buying a million books which they can never use with their players. Not that I would know from experience <laughs> at all. Well, Sunny, I think that's about all we can really cover on this one. Yeah, these were the major points that excited us. So yeah, yeah, and I'm excited it. to be excited, to come into the hobby and be like, oh, yes, I'm glad they're doing all of these things. And what does that mean next? Yeah, and it's just been such a pleasant surprise to even hear that they want to consider a model agnostic game. Yeah, that's and... really interesting. I, I hope that they go somewhere with that. Yeah, and they continue on with that co-op style game as well. I well, yeah, I, I, I think that it's really good that they're exploring. That's what I'm excited about. Rather than reiterations on these tiny changes, I think when you make those big changes, that's when exciting things happen. Yeah, and it's a pleasant surprise, as I said once again, and you guys should have a pleasant week. Yeah, in fact, have a great week, and of course, keep, keep those brushes, brushes wet. Bye-bye.